hello everybody I hope this finds you well I'm going to uh, uh, make this video about uh, the accuracy and uh, the discrepancies of fundamental belief of uh, the historical accuracy of the first few chapters of Genesis. Um, it is something that I have studied, prayed about, and uh, I have uh, come to certain conclusions in my own mind about these things which I wish to share with you and hopefully we can discuss these things to find some deeper understanding of the nature of God. Let me begin. Now, it is argued, and rightly so, by many skeptics of the Bible that uh, the account given in the first two chapters of Genesis cannot be correct as historical and factual thing. Now, their arguments are such things as the age of the universe, which scientifically, how can the light from stars known to be millions of light years away even reach us? if the earth is only 6,000 years old. This right here almost destroys the fundamental belief in the seven day creation story that has told in a literal sense in the literal interpretation of these two chapters. Now that does not make the Bible wrong nor does it make it a lie. And I will demonstrate this, hopefully, to my best ability. Now, consider this. Now, if we look at those two or three chapters, maybe four, I'll have to look again, um, of Genesis, you know, the first two chapters are contradictory, basically. If you look at them, in a literal sense, they're two separate creation stories that do not go in the same order of sequence. Now, this has been defended by pretty intelligent people, such as Kent Hoven. I know a lot of atheists hate that word, usually because he trounces them in debates, but Kent Hoven, you know, I respect and like and do admire the man, uh, is wrong on certain things that he says about those discrepancies. You would have to go look at his videos to see what I'm talking about there. I believe he, in his uh, interpretation. The first creation was one thing and then the second creation was done separately for Adam's sake in the garden. This cannot be verified biblically and is only a belief. But Kent Hovind also said something that I do agree with. When reading literature and uh, teachings from and knowledge from other people and other sources. It is good to eat the meat but spit out the bones. Now, this is a bone. Sorry, Kent. I love you, but this is a bone. Um, now let us look at the couple, those two chapters of Genesis in a more uh, in a different context, in a different light. Let's look at them 
as if they are not historical writings of events which were witnessed, which no one could have witnessed the first days of creation since no man existed. And to say that God said that's the way it is it would also be a belief, not something that would be verifiable. Now, God, whom I do believe is real, and I would have to explain to you and describe to you my definition of what God is. See, in my eyes, in my mind, and in my belief, in the belief word again, that God is the all-encompassing force, the source of all things. Everything emanates from Him. He is the one beginning. Now, all things need a beginning, but God is not a thing. God is a spirit beyond time, space, therefore is infinite. So there's no need for a beginning or an ending for this force, which I choose to call God. Now Einstein was somewhat right about that uh, set things in motion, wound it up and let it run. However, he was wrong in that there was no personal relationship to be attained with such a thing that he didn't care about us. This would be completely contrary to the nature of the source. Since all things emanate from this source, God is then in everything. Everything. That energy creates everything. Now, this may be hard for many of you to grasp, and it's okay. Now, if we look at it as a poetic, poetic symbology with deeper hidden meanings, as the Bible code indicates, then we find a completely different story in a completely image of what is being said in those two chapters. Now, it is well known by most theologians that those two chapters were wrote by different authors, different authors, and both are unknown authors. Some speculate it was Moses, but uh, it is my belief that Moses already knew these things, that they were taught to him from another source. So Moses was privileged as growing up a young man in the court of Pharaoh to all sorts of secret no sacred knowledge and secrets that were kept from the common man in order that uh, the ruling class and the priests you could have power over them. And this is the case with all religions. That's what religion is. A form of control over the people. An organized form of control over the people. Now God never intended man to have an organized religion with self-appointed priests and rulers over them. God himself was to be their ruler and their king. They did not need others to tell them what to do. God would send prophets, and you would know they were prophets because what they said was 100% true. But if a prophet of God said it was going to rain tomorrow at 9 o'clock, and it didn't rain at 9 o'clock, then he was not a prophet of God. 
and they'd probably stoned him. So, uh, so uh, we can pretty much take what the prophets wrote in Scripture said as truth, because their people would have stoned them if they would have made one mistake. So, let us look at that, the book of Genesis, in a more poetic, symbolic, symbolic way, and take into account the hidden code behind it. We will find that these things could not have been contrived by men unless those men had a foreknowledge of things to come thousands of years, but at least a thousand five hundred years after the book was written. Like if you take, for example, the sequence of birth in chapter three, I believe, and you take the names, and you know, all that begots and begats, which are the boring part, and Sunday school you kind of skip through when you first read the Bible, because it's, oh, begot, 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 you know, you know, they use the dates from the ages to get the dates that they determine the age of the earth from those, those things. But um, we don't know that this name genealogy is completely accurate. There may well be people missing in that genealogy that were not mentioned. But if you take the names that were mentioned and line them up and look for the meaning of each name, and put that meaning next to that name and then read the meanings of each name as if you're reading a sentence. It actually makes a great deal of sense and is a good proof for the accuracy of the Bible and that it is the inspired word of God. That someone was inspired to write these words by some divine entity because no man could have known these things ahead of time. Don't take my word for it. Go look it up yourself. Um, now, If you take those first two chapters and look at them symbolically, it tells you a great deal that can be scientifically shown and is not in conflict with modern science and the knowledge we have about the universe and the formation of the earth. Um, I will try to illustrate this and um, put those videos up. I'd begun doing this a while back, but uh, was having uh, time constraints to my ability to work on it as much as I would like to. Um, economy the way it is, I'm having to work more hours to make the same amount. It's cost of living going up and um, competition being as fierce as it is, it's difficult for me to raise my rates to those who I'm contracting to. Uh, so. Um, 
time is not on my side on this matter. However, if God's willing, there will be time for it, and you shall see them soon. Now, a different, slightly different topic, but still related to theology and the arguments against uh, theological belief. Now, one of them is uh, the arguments against uh, the teleolo teleological argument the con irre irreversible complexity divine watchmaker you know you know the argument um, kind of a branch of the cosmological argument fine tuning of the universe now uh, many out there give pretty good arguments against this uh, but they they fall short, and uh, their arguments are also based on their belief system. Uh, one of the best arguments I've seen against it is uh, you take a brick. You know, a brick is a pretty simple structure, it's a pretty simple thing. Yet bricks were designed and created. We all know this. Bricks don't just pop up out of the ground, hop on the wall. You have to go through a constructive process to create them. Now, that's not a very complex thing, a brick. It's created. Now, we can look at complex things, such as crystals. Crystals form naturally, without anyone's hand involved. Uh, seemingly no intelligence is necessary for a crystal to form. It forms naturally. Now well, that's a, a good argument, but uh, let me show the flaw in that second argument about the crystal formation. Snowflakes all having a beautiful design, yet they form naturally. Um, what are these things made of? What is crystal made of? Molecules. Molecules are made of atoms. Atoms are particles which have to be fine tuned to specific parameters. Otherwise, the atom will fall apart. It won't exist at all. The molecules will never form. For that crystal to form, it has to have just the right amount of chemicals at just the right temperature, with just the right amount of moisture, and just the right fine-tuned particles to form these structures. And they could not be formed without the fine-tuned nature of the atomic structure. Now, that right there destroys that argument completely. Water molecule is a very interesting molecule. I've been working on videos about the water molecule as well. They're a little more tricky when you start talking about the very small uh, physics of the atoms and particles which make up the atoms. Um, it's uh, not at all the same as what you see in the large physical world. The physics takes on a bizarre an interesting uh, twist. Uh, nothing in the minus, minuscule atomic level acts 
like it follows any of the laws of physics regarding heavenly bodies, movement, motion, size, and proportion. None of those things have the same meanings on the atomic level. Uh, it's a very technical field and very difficult for many to understand. In my uh, work I'm doing on this, I'm trying to make it as simple and understandable for you as possible and I hope to do so, but it is a very complex thing uh, and it does not give itself easy to simple explanations. But then uh, God is very complex and cannot be given to a simple explanation either. Our language is inadequate to describe the true in a, truly in a way to completely comprehend what God is. Um, I hope this made sense to you and I hope it opens the debate and discussion on these topics. Um, keep your comments friendly. This is for people who wish to think for themselves and not for those who simply push their ideological viewpoints. Um, let us reason together has intelligent people, not has blind masses. More to come on this issue. Thank you all for uh, spending your time on this video. Peace, love, and understanding. I'll be with you all.